Hi, my name is Rob and I'm at Goto Aarhus to tell you all about the uh, security features that GitHub has that most of the people that are building stuff on GitHub have no clue that it is even available. And it's available for free. It's a lot of uh, features from the advanced security suite, um, like for example using Dependabolt. What we often see is that people know Dependabolt from version updates, but you can also get security alerts from Dependabolt as well. Another thing we'll talk about is secret scanning and doing static application security testing with CodeQL and all that stuff is available on the GitHub platform for free for public repositories. So I'm here to tell you all about how those things work. I'm not just here because people just ask me to talk about this thing, but this is really something we need to improve on as an industry as well. We still see a lot of developers who have no clue that they're part of the security team for their application as well. And we really need to embed security as much in the developer process as possible. We still see people leaking out secrets, for example, right into their repositories. I've even seen people committing their uh, secrets as comments on a public repository in an issue. So that is where we can definitely improve and teach people that things are there. But we can also use the tools that are available to make our lives easier, but also more secure by default. And we as developers really need to bring this into our daily process as well. And lots of the tools can be automated so they can do the scans for us and then we can pick it up from there as well. Um, so first part is knowing that they're actually there, but also knowing of why we need to do certain things. I still encounter a lot of engineers who have no clue what the OWASP top 10, for example, is. Well, we've been doing this for over a decade right now. OWASP top 10 is things like SQL injection attacks and knowing that those are there as well. There are tools available on the GitHub platform that you can use for free again with public repositories that scan for six, I think, out of the 10 uh, in the OS 10 issues that we have in source code, like SQL injection attack, attacks, but also logging clear text um, secrets, for example, in your logs. We really need to step up as a community there and as an industry to make our software more secure with that setup as well. We'll also talk about a dependable in this session, because it's not only just the single dependencies you think you're pulling in, but guess what? We're all developers, we're lazy. So if we have a library that we can use that does something for us, we build on top of those libraries. And people who create packages and spend um, uh, and upload them to a package manager, for example, they'll do just the same thing. So the dependencies you're pulling in will have dependencies of themselves and they will have dependencies as well. It's really all the uh, turtles all the way down in that sense. So our dependencies will have dependencies will have dependencies. And what we see is that if your dependencies somewhere along the line have an issue, that issue might bubble up into your own application that you're deploying into production. And somehow that vulnerability could end up in your production system as well. And we've seen those types of attacks. We've seen the log4j attacks last year, where people were scurrying, do we have this dependency in our application at all? And I'm giving you some of the tools to figure out if that is actually the case. Uh, with the tools that GitHub has for this, you can even get an organization-wide overview that shows you if you actually have the log4j dependency in your application, but also which repositories pull them in. Just to give you a better overview of what you can do there. We've seen the same thing with the SolariWinds attack. Now, we actually need to think about all of the pipelines that we have where we deploy software into production that they can be vulnerable as well. For example, with the SolariWinds attack, they injected one single assembly into a build artifact, a zip file that got deployed into production. SolarWinds produces a big CRM system and they deploy that to their customers' endpoints. So their actual customer environment will have that running in production and doing certain things. That single assembly got uploaded into a build artifact and got deployed into three and a half thousand customer sites and all customer had down the same issue, the same vulnerability injected in their system that could be misused to exfiltrate, for example, personal information from the customers, from the customers of the customers even. So it was a big thing as well. I've got a link somewhere in the slides that you can look up later on. The slides are shared as well. We can really dive into the Solari gate um, attack, what happened there and how super specific this was for that specific company. And that's usually what we see when we talk about these things as well is that people say, well, this will not happen in our company. We're not publicly traded, for example. We don't have to abide by certain auditing rules that we have there. But guess what? Every company we now uh, see on the, um, uh, on the consultancy side, for example, as well, they are now a software company and they deploy software into production as well. So that is where all the security aspects come into play. We really need to step our game as security engineers as well. That's usually what I do in this session as well. Ask people who identifies themselves as an engineer, 
and then you see people's uh, hand going up. And then you start asking, who is actually responsible in your team for all the security that we have in our application? And half of the hands lower down again. And then you ask, who is actually responsible for updating all the dependencies that we have in our application? In this session, only two hands stayed up, so there is definitely something to learn for people as well. So join this session later on. You'll get access uh, to the full of recording and all the slides that are there uh, later on. And you can uh, then really dive into what is happening there and, uh, and learn more on how you can improve your application security setup, but also for your build pipelines, for example, as well.